Welcome, everyone. We're excited for week three. We're going to be talking about Namaste. And uh, Kevin Hall is going, has got a, a, a lifetime experience and been studying the subject for many years. He's going to be sharing uh, great uh, concepts and some wisdom. Um, but this whole program, we the, the goal is to develop some brand new tools, you know, coping through these unprecedented times, sharpen some existing tools. You're going to hear some of these things over again, but it'll just, it may resonate just a little bit differently, or you can just bring it out of the emotional toolbox and wipe off the dust and be ready to use it as we we're going through these difficult times. And then we're going to just spend maybe 10 minutes going through what I'll call practical tips of the week, uh, which I'll be leading that up. One of the feedbacks that we've had from the audience is they'd like to have a little bit more interaction. Uh, so we've done two, two things to, to adjust for that. First, we have on the response at the bottom of your screen, you can click response. And if you raise, put the thumbs up sign, then we will unmute you and then can call on you to have more interaction. Also, uh, we've, we've sent out a study guide, which is I thought turned out beautifully that hits the highlight points along with some uh, beautiful artwork to get us um, kind of a, more, a little bit more refined system because we're what I've also heard is we go through a lot of material quickly, key points are within the study guide. And then lastly, as you can see, there's, there's some graphics up here that we are learning experience. So with that, I would like to introduce our uh, leader here, Kevin Hall. And Kevin, if you take it away, and if you, we appreciate you. Thank you, Norm. Boy, am I excited. I celebrated my birthday Monday. May the force be with you. You always hear that. And uh, I'm grateful to be here because today we're talking about namaste. And I'm going to have some of you raise your hand. I'm going to ask you, what does namaste mean? If you're Gracie Kurtz, if you're Dave Ferroni, if you're Josh Farr, what does namaste mean? Put your thumbs up respond i'd love to hear as we start what two or three of you think that means and we're going to talk about that because we travel to india and as you leave a hotel the whole staff will come out they'll put their hands together and say namaste what does that mean anybody want to take a shot at that i need somebody don't leave me hanging it's not good to do it would be a good birthday gift couple days after. Who wants to tell me what namaste means? Get the most out of the day. What did he say? Get, get, the, get most. the most out of the day. Get the most out of the day. You got it, brother. It means get the most out of the day for sure. Um, we've heard it means to salute the divine within, to salute your greatness, to salute what you naturally do best. Now, after a bike ride, I did a long bike ride. I was social distance, but on my birthday, 11 hour bike ride. That's kind of selfish to do that once a year, do my age plus a hundred miles, and then you're a little bit stiff. And so sometimes you get a flexibility experience. And I don't know if any of you have been to yoga but they always come to me because i'm mr concrete and i remember asking someone in a group i think it was in a, a berkshire hathaway group i said what does namaste mean and one of the executives at berkshire berkshire hathaway said namaste means that yoga class it's almost over <laughs> and I've always loved that, but it, 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 it means that you have a chance and an opportunity to be yourself. It means you don't have to compare yourself with anybody else. In fact, comparison is the thief of all joy. And so today you have your guidebook. You've got these four areas that we're going to go to. You see at the top, be yourself. Everyone else is already taken by Oscar Wilde, I love that. You, I can't be somebody else. If I want to be free, if you want to be free, you've got to be who you were meant to be. If I want to be free, I've got to be me and be the very best 
version of me. We talk about in that first point today, we have four points. Every person is an unrepeatable miracle. There are eight, seven to eight billion people on this planet. I don't know who counts that last person says that seven billion, eight billion. That's a lot of people. Not one of us laughs the same way, talks the same way, has the same set of unique gifts. Every person is an unrepeatable miracle. In a forest of 100,000 trees, just think of that. Look out at a forest, 100,000 trees, no two leaves are alike. You are as unique as the fingerprints and the footprints that you place on your path. And one of the challenges, you'll hear it twice as we go through, this will be one of my favorite of the eight sessions. One of the most important things that you can do is stop doing what you're good at and start doing what you're great at. You don't need to find a new job. You don't need to find a new company. You just need to find you. And when you stop doing what you're good at and start doing what you're great at, amazing things happen. And the world opens up. Abundance opens up. Opportunity opens up. There's a Hindu legend that tells how their god of God, Brahma, decided that the Godhead would be taken away from man and hid someplace where he would never find it to abuse it. Hide it down in man himself, said Brahma, to the lesser gods. He will never think to look there. Now, this is in the very first self-development book I ever read, I Dare You, by William Danforth, the founder of the Ralston Perina Company, the American Youth Foundation. It was written during the Great Depression. And I remember reading this story, and then it said, and that is what they did, hidden down in every man, it says, every man or woman, is some of the divine. Ever since then, they've gone all over the earth, digging diving, climbing, looking for that quality, which all the time is hidden deep down within themselves. We have divinity within us. And you have the opportunity to tap into that. It's your genius. It's the genie within us. And it will answer every dream. Your wish is my command. You tap into your real, genuine, authentic self. And amazing things can happen. I hope you'll remember this again. Comparison, it's a thief of all joy. It is, you heard it when we started, you hear it now in this session, the third one. It doesn't bring you joy. What brings you joy is tapping into what you're greatest at, what you love to, choose to, desire to do. Norm, before we go to a talent wasted is a sin, and I'm going to talk about my good friend Gene Siskel from Siskel and Ebert at the movie. Some of you are too young to even know who he is, but you know who he is, Norm, and I'll tell you about our very first conversation. His widow, Marlene, who is a producer, is, is helping us produce Man's Search for Meaning, working on that movie project together. But what do you think of that, Norm, when I say be yourself, everyone else is already taken? Because being Norm Dietrich, it's not a bad deal. You say being Norm isn't a bad thing, is it, Norm? I think being who, who you're, you're, being your highest and best self is the area that we're all striving to be. And you can't be somebody else. It's who God wanted you to be. And you know when you're doing it, when you have a, look, I'll give you a couple of signs that I, that I know. Like when time just flies by. I'll know that I'm being my highest and best self. When I'm proud of myself, I'll know that I'm in my highest and best self. And Sullivan, he often calls it working in your unique ability. I think uh, Stephen Covey talks about being in the upper left-hand quadrant, and I can't remember the name of it, but I bet you can. But um, great things seem to happen when you spend the majority of your time working on things you love to do. Wow. 
I hope you heard that. Man, Norm, we're going to have to just turn this whole thing over to you. For no, 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 no. no. We're, we're grateful to have you here. When, when time just flies, and when you're done, and you say, you know, I'm proud of myself. That's what you're born to do. You have gifts. By the way, you can't realize a gift unless you open it. Sometimes people go their whole life without opening a gift. It's kind of a calling. You can hear it. It won't shout you down. It's a calling for a reason. That's why a time like this, we have a little more time to pause and to think and to be around loved ones. My wife, Sherry, supported me that entire day with our youngest daughter, Sharwan. And you have time to really connect into nature and into your nature. Nature comes from natura, and it means to be born, or it's the gifts that you were born with. Those things that you were most curious about as a child, the things that bring you joy and love, when you say, I would do this for free, that's when you know you're tapping in to your highest and best self. I'm a Utah Jazz fan. We're in Salt Lake City. Cleveland, you got your world championship. LeBron brought it back. I mean, one of the greatest ever. There will be that debate. And I'm pretty sure you run it a little bit longer. Whether you love him or hate him, he's tapped into his unique, natural gifts. And I really admire that staying power that he has. We used to sit right behind the visiting bench. So in 97 and 98, if you're watching The Last Dance, and I haven't watched it yet with Michael Jordan because it broke my heart, because we were in Chicago sharing seats with Gene and Marlene Sisko because we had been in Houston when John Stockton hit this shot over Charles Barkley to send us to the NBA championships. But we were sitting in some of the owner seats in Houston, right behind the, the announcer for the Houston Rockets. And you can hear my voice screaming, John Stockton, what a player, what a player. We get home and we're gonna go to the world championship. And the phone rings and I pick it up and I don't know who it is and says, hi, this is Gene Sisko. Well, I didn't put together Gene Sisko. And I said, okay. And he said, you know, Gene Sisko with the Chicago Tribune. And I'm like, all right. And then he said, do you get TV in Salt Lake City? You know, with Siskel and Ebert at the movies. And then we started to laugh and we became dear friends. And we tried to one up each other. When they came out, I let them sit in our seats so he could be right behind Michael Jordan. And you'll see Sherry and I have a little bit of hair, a little bit younger looking, um, what is that, 13 years ago. But when we went out to Chicago to meet Gene and Marlene the first time, we went to Gibson's, top shelf steakhouse. He said the best meal around. The very first thing he said when we sat down is, Kevin, a talent wasted is a sin. That, just, that was our first conversation within a minute. Sherry and Marlene are talking. He was orphaned. His parents died. He was brought in, sent to a couple of foster homes. He was brought in by an uncle and aunt who really became his parents. And they taught him and he had certain gifts. And the last message that he shared with his two daughters, Kate and Callie, and his son, Will, who's now a professional baseball picture talent analyzer, a talent wasted is a sin. He loved movies. And he turned watching movies into what he did for a living. And when you read Oprah magazine, you read at the back, what do you know for sure? That's Gene Siskel. She got that from Gene. He said, say, what do you know for sure? You know when you're happy. You know when you're a space of joy. You know when you're doing what you were meant to do. And so again, I'm gonna challenge you, stop doing what you're good at. There are things that I need to do that I'm not particularly, you know, great at, I need to do that in a regular society. But what if I focus on my greatness? And hopefully that's coaching. Hopefully that's speaking and teaching and connecting 
and writing. But I'm not an engineer. I'm not an accountant. I'm not an attorney. You don't want me doing any of those things for you. If you try to be all things to all people, you'll be nothing to nobody really quick. When we open our gifts and serve others with them, we honor the giver of those gifts. And again, your gifts aren't about you. Purpose isn't about you. Leadership isn't about you. It's about serving those who need your unique gifts. And that's why it's an honor that we can spend this time together very short in these eight sessions. And if you need anything from me at any time, you let me know. Because that would honor what my mother said, leave other people better for having met you. The only way you can do it is by tapping into your gifts. So one final thing before we go to the third point. And our third point that we're gonna go to here in just a second, is identifying your unique gifts. I'm gonna give you some keys on how to identify those gifts. Well, let's just go back for a minute in Shakespeare's time. The word character, right? So they have character. That word has changed. Character was something that was engraved on wood, on stone, on metal. In fact, character is what's engraved on your soul. It's everything good and everything bad that's ever happened to you. But at Shakespeare's time, that meaning totally changed. There's power in words. A character became a part that somebody played in somebody else's play. And they often wore a mask to hide their true identity. These last several weeks, we take the mask off and we can be free to be who we were meant to be. And they're gonna be so many, they already have. For us, we are busier than we've ever been. So many great opportunities to tap into your greatness. Norm, when, when was it okay for you to be free to who you were meant to be? Because the first time I met you at our Genshai retreat in January, I went, that's somebody I wanna to get to know better. Cause you're real, you're genuine, you're authentic. Were you taught that? How did you learn that, Norm? You think of when we are teenagers, and sometimes people say, why can't you be more like Ned? Um, why don't you can't be more like um, Lance? Why can't you be more like? And sometimes, you know, we're free to be who we are at a certain age, and then in our teen years, we get that peer pressure, and we want to start to be like everybody else. When I look at the norm that I know now, you're who you are. What you see is what you get. And uh, I think it's one of your strengths. I think that's why we're doing what we're doing here. When was that okay for you to say, you know what, I don't need to be somebody else. I don't need to be Timmy. I don't need to be Ned. I don't need to be Lance. I just need to be Norm. And maybe can Judy can comment on that. Maybe she can raise her hand and tell us about that. But Norm, when did you get that understanding it was okay to be who you're meant to be? Unfortunately, and also unfortunately, I grew up in a very, uh, my mom suffered from mental illness and uh, it was a very abusive environment. And it taught, I had to grow up incredibly fast. And through, through that journey, um, it, it crystal clear, I am who I am. And I had to do that to survive. Then it's just something that I came to work on, and it's just kind of a work in progress from there. And I still work on that to, to this day, is, is working on playing into my unique ability or in my in trying to refine my life. That I'm spending more time there than in other other categories. One of my goals right now is I'm trying to 10x my life, make it more impactful for others, and also more enjoyable. And that's just a continuous refinement and a, some trials and errors, and and so on and so forth. So I hope that answers the question. It does. It does. I'm trying to 10x my life. And sometimes people say, well, I'm a product of this environment. I can't tap into my gifts. I was taught this. There's always, you are an example of someone who's resilient. And I would say one of the best things that we can do to make a shift is use an affirmation. I am is a sacred salutation. It means the beginning from the end. And whatever follows I am, follows. So I would ask you this week as part of the homework, 
When you start your day, that very first point, say, I am an unrepeatable miracle. And you are. There's nobody like you. I love to hear people laugh. We have a lot of fun in our training sessions. We do a two or three day life mastery experience that Norm and Judy came out to in, in Zion Park area. And when you hear people laugh, you know, even identical twins, their fingerprints, footprints, their laugh is not the same. I remember there was a point in my life when I was, I was a little bit, we were building Franklin, it became Franklin Covey. I was fortunate to be over to the sales and training side of the business, but I felt like I wasn't tapping into my natural gifts. And I found out about a natural gifts test by the Johnson O'Connor Research Foundation. They have eight different testing centers. I think they still have one near you in Chicago. It was one in Boston. I went to the one in LA, right out of Beverly Hills. And they test. One was an engineering test. Some of you on this call, you're, you've got an engineering capacity. I'm not. They said to me, do not design tall bridges. Don't design tall buildings because they'll collapse. I guess my mind, like an auto reverse cassette tape still to this day, I don't know how it plays on the other side. That's just how my mind works. They did a tweezer dexterity. I can type I'm about 70 words a minute, maybe a few errors, typist. And they had me do tweezer dexterity. And I thought I aced that experience. After a day and a half, they sit down and tell you where your strengths are. And they told me about the engineering, that I was in the bottom 5%. And then this woman said, Kevin, you're in the bottom one-tenth of one one-hundredth of one percent for tweezer dexterity. Don't be a surgeon. If I'm your surgeon, that means of the, that, at that point, they had tested about a million people. I'm the worst or the second or third worst of anybody they've ever tested. But let's say I want to be your brain surgeon. I want to be the surgeon that's going to save your life. You don't want me with my tweezer dexterity coming in, no matter how bad I want to be the best at that. I said earlier, sometimes we're looking around, the grass is always greener. When you find a great organization, just bring your strengths to play. If you're working for Nor, he wants you to bring your greatness. They're gifts of greatness, not just gifts. And so I kind of got off of this thinking I was going to be an attorney, an engineer, maybe a doctor. And now here I am. I'm a writer. And you know what taught me that that day? I'd been marketing, selling, connecting. I do that naturally. They brought me a piece of paper. They put a single word on it. It could be like this. They bring me a paper, eight and a half, 11. It could have Genshai on it. They just brought me a word and they said, write as much as you can write. Three minute test. Most people could fill about a half a page. I filled the entire page, turned it over, filled the other page. They ran and gave me a second word, filled both pages, third word, fourth word, fifth word. I filled half of that second page. And when we stopped, she said, they looked at each other and said, oh my goodness, of the hundreds of thousands of people that we've tested. And this was a test called Ideaphoria. I hear a thought, an idea, I connect it with something else. They said, of all the people we've tested, you scored in the top 1% of anybody we've ever tested. You know what you might want to consider, Kevin? You might want to write, and you might want to write about words. And that started me on this trajectory where I talk about words and break down words, and we have those thoughts. So I'd love to hear or see some hands go up. Thumbs, tell us your thoughts on that, and the host will open you up when you put that out, because I'd love to hear from two or three of you or any questions that you might have about tapping into your gifts, about being an unrepeatable miracle, how a talent wasted is a sin, or how you identify your natural gifts. You know, Kevin, I'll give you one that um, 
for those that are Celeste married. Spencer, but that's not so. Yes, let's, <laughs> let's unmute him, please. How are you, Celeste? Yeah, it's good. No, to not quite. She's out of the other corner. Uh, this is Paul Nagg. Hi, Paul. For 30 years, I, uh, I ran my own business. I, I made a business and I ran it. Uh, I, I repaired boats. Uh, and after four or five years, um, I had great admiration for my dad. And um, uh, one day, he said to me how proud he was of what I had done. Um, I had an, I have an older brother, I had an older brother, and I have an older sister uh, who were both very um, good at what they did. My brother was an accountant and uh, was very successful. Uh, my sister was a teacher and enjoyed thoroughly what she did. And when you say um, that you were doing something that you would do without being paid, uh, that was pretty much what I enjoyed about my fixing boats and talking to customers and being um, out there where people could ask me questions and um, uh, I could try and answer them. Sometimes I had answers, sometimes I didn't. And if I didn't, I muddled my way through. Uh, anyhow, uh, it, was, uh, it was 30 years. I've now been retired for 10, um, but still when I find a project that I like. Uh, now I'm not doing them for money, but I, I do get into it and enjoy it. Uh, I spend a, a lot of time at my church uh, repairing the building. Um, I'm the properties manager there and, and um, I really enjoy doing that. And people are happy with what I do. So uh, it must That's be- Awesome, Paul. I got to thank you for sharing that because just think that's, that's, there's some hints in there. You enjoy it. You love it. It's, I'm thinking of a stepfather and I, I wish you were out here. You could help refinish a boat, bought an old boat. We'd refinish it, work on it. You would be like the master to be right next to us. And some people will say to you, all of you, we might go to Gracie Kurtz here in a minute. There's Gracie. I can see her. Nature works. But nature doesn't work. That's that final key, follow your nature. We have behind us, it looks like Zion Park, we have red cliffs behind us, and we have a red tail hawk that will come out, and it will just float. It'll, it's like a kite on a kite string. And it can float up there for minutes, sometimes 15, 20 minutes. It, every several minutes, it just once or twice, it flaps its wings because it's doing what it was meant to do. You'll hear hints, you're a natural, that's in your nature, it's second nature to you. And like you just said, Paul, we'll say, I would do that for free. You can get really, you can get paid really well to do what you would do for free. I would do this for free. I didn't tell Norm that when he scheduled these dates, so Norm, we could have saved you some money, but I would do this for free. Is that okay? <laughs> Kylie, is it okay that we did it that way? Delicia, I love that name. Is it okay? Kylie, Delicia, or Gracie, do one of you three have a comment you want to share? Put the thumbs up and come in because I'd love, love to hear what's on your mind. Delicia, I know it's on your mind. We're on the, you can't hide because I can see you. You can run, but you can't hide. And that's what happens with your gifts. You've got them for a reason. You open them. What are you thinking as we're talking about this today? And uh, you're, you know what? You're a beautiful person. I saw that last week. There's some light in your eyes, which is really fun. Really Thank nice. you. Thank you. Um, I would say, Kevin, you know, if, I, if I'm, listening to everything that you say, I, I have two kids and the one thing that I push them towards is the gifts that they've been given. You know, and I always tell them, use your gift. You know, if you, if you don't use it, you know, you lose it, you know, and, and put your gifts to work no matter what it is. And it's like you said, you know, um, there are things that I do, you know, that I'm naturally talented at that I didn't go to school to do. 
it was just already built in me when I was created. And so I enjoy doing those things. And that's what brings me the most joy is, is helping others and doing things for others that they can't do for themselves and, and just sharing it, you know. So I, that's me with um, the gifts. And it's something that I impart in my, my children. They're both musical. So it's um, teaching them, you know, use your gifts, you know, to the best of your ability and to bring joy to others. Love it. What a, what a great mom you are to tell them you have gifts. You shared what, just what I shared earlier, that if you have a gift, you got to open it. And, and, and if you open that gift, I'm a person of belief, you honor who gave you that gift. And then you can share those with people who need them uh, most. Tammy Quick is smiling a little bit. And Gracie is nodding her head. Do one of you two want to share a thought? Don't move your hand or nod your head. Celeste is like, uh-oh, it came to Paula and coming back. Gracie, please. Gracie, she's got her hand raised. How you um, doing, so Gracie? It's nice I'm to good. see you in person. Thanks. And that was something I was naturally good at. That was my talent. Um, and so I've been able to use that not to just do it to make money, but I do that to help people and being able to not only figure out what you're good at, but using that to, to be the best person you can and to help others be the best they can. So when I uh, met Doug and Norm and they brought me on their team, I've been very grateful to use those gifts that I was born with to help grow the company, grow the team and keep us on the up and up, but also learning from them and learning how to be the best I can and how to take my talents further. Because when I graduated school, I thought I'm pretty good. You know, I went to school for it, but when I just aged a little bit and started working with them, I figured out there's way more that you can learn already that you know and just help help others be the best they can with that. Wow, that is awesome. Before we go to Tammy quick, and we're gonna go there quick, Tammy, <laughs> but Gracie, um, you're like this hub. We've heard so many good things about you. You're bringing your gifts. When, when a team comes together, you take people's strengths and those strengths make others' weaknesses irrelevant because irrelevant, you can collaborate. And so we should do more of that. Sometimes we can say, oh, they're great at this and they're great at that. But in the Western culture sometimes, and, and Vivek might be able to tell us a little bit about that, but we're going to go to Tammy next. In the Western culture, sometimes we almost have to say, but you know what they're not good at? Focus on your strengths, not your weaknesses. A tweezer dexterity that I can only be a one on the scale of one to ten. But let's say I'm an eight as a speaker or a coach or a writer, but I want to be a ten. Why not work on that? John Maxwell, one of my dear friends and mentors, calls it that sweet spot, your strength zone. Play to your strengths. And let's be kind of quick, Tammy, quick. I know I'm doing that play <laughs> on your name. I love that. Yeah, everyone loves that about my name. Um, I love it. That's a that's a Hollywood name. I would love that. Kevin <laughs> Quick on my bike ride. <laughs> um, I think one of my strengths is that I go out of my way to make people feel comfortable. Yeah. So when I meet you, it's not um, I'm looking down at you or I have an expectation of you. I just try to accept people the way they are. Um, I grew up in a very kind of like not like Norm, but my family was very negative, so it was something that I was on the outside with, but it has always helped me when I'm in a group or even by myself to have that faith that whoever I am meeting is going to be kind and good until they prove otherwise. Wow. If we hadn't called on you right then, we're going to go to Norm here in just a couple of minutes. He's going to share some tips, and then we're going to bring it home. Um, you just said something that, you know, we're, we're all the same. 
If you ever feel like you're inferior to someone in a certain setting, you'll likely feel superior to somebody else in a different setting. And we're all the same. We all have a unique set of gifts. And the challenge is to tap into those gifts and share them. And so just seeing you on here and many of you, you know, it, you do have that warmth that you've overcome um, what you were raised with. And it takes growth and it takes intention. And it takes planting seeds every day. As you grow, you're happy. You're a happy person. I can tell that. I don't mean you're happy every second, but when you're growing, you're happy. And uh, one final thing before I go to Norm, we hear that term stress, like I said earlier, overloaded, going to have a breakdown. That comes from the industrial age. We say that sometimes in our life. And if you say that occasionally, you're just normal. But if you're saying that day after day, week after week, month after month, you're not a machine. You're not the factory floor. This isn't Henry Ford's day when all of that assembly line is overloaded and it's going to have a breakdown. You're a human being. And when you're tapping into what it is you're meant to do, you're tapping into what you're most curious about. Think of the books you read the movies you watch, the articles you clip out of magazines or you highlight, that's what you're most curious about. Stay with that. Then what brings you joy and fulfillment and satisfaction? Fulfillment, it flows. Abundance comes from the abundance of the sea. What comes after one wave? Another wave, then another wave, then another wave. You can share your gifts and you'll get more back than you ever give. Tap into what brings you joy, your natural gifts and curiosity. Those three. We have an Ignite test that we're putting together where you can home in more on how you do that. Nor, my friend, before we bring this home, those tips that you've been gathering from everyone else, there may be one other hand that goes up, and I'll just share two or three minutes. All righty. So, Kevin, thank you for uh, walking us through Namaste. And one of the things I found like as I, as I work through trying to analyze what my gifts are, get to that point where you've got, got a few of them on the paper. But I found two exercises that I think are incredibly helpful. You ask your best friend what you think your, your, your gifts are, you'll get another perspective and I, I'm gonna bet you're gonna add a, a couple more to the list. And then also if you ask your spouse, that will also um, usually add a couple more. Um, I'd be in that right heart of mind to really, really listen. Great. Another uh, guiding principle that I have that, that uh, just helps me stay focused to the best I can be is I, I look at like, what do I want people to feel when they walk by my casket? And one of the things I've had, been blessed, I've had 10,000 people work for me in the last journey of 32 years. And I realized that, that each person, there's some people I've had a, a, a minimal impact, a medium influence, or a large influence. But it's one of my goals is I want everyone to feel a little bit better because they met me. And that helps me focus and keep in the right heart and the right mindset as I try to work with my gifts and also try to do wow. my purpose. So, on the, on the, so that's kind of my segue to, to kind of closing up what you said about Namaste. But also want to share with you another tool. It's a little bit more practical, um, more on a daily basis that, that they use this. Um, a lot of times, especially as we're going through this pandemic with these unprecedented times, emotional tension's higher. And, it, and it's that way for every single one of us. We miss people. We're, some of us are missing our freedom more than others. And what I found, uh, I had this executive coach, uh, Giselle Chapman, teach me this. It's called Release Tension, Set Intention. I'll just give you a simple one. Like, I'll come home, and sometimes I, I get frustrated myself. I just can't get all my stuff done. That creates me, that's probably my highest frustration, or if I'm the log jam. But anyway, as I'm, as I'm coming home, I pull in the driveway, I'll just spend two minutes before I walk in the door, and take 10 deep breaths, like an in, deep breath, hold it, let it out. That's releasing tension. And before I take my other breath, I want my wife to feel loved, I want my children to feel loved, and let that out. I say, okay, I want my children to feel like I'm 100% present and I care about them. So I envision three or four key things I want to set my intention. And when I do that, and I don't always do it, so I don't want to 
create um, a misunderstanding. But the long story short, when I do, raises my, uh, my, 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 it raises, it brings out my highest and best self. So I like to share that with, with everybody on this call. They may want to give that a try. It was release tension, set intention. On the social distancing, I want to kind of share with you a little bit what, what I'm seeing going on in my family, what I'm seeing going on with my team. It's something that we continuously need to be reminded of. It, we are just natural creatures that just want to drift and get closer together. And when we, if we have a friend over in the garage or we go for a walk, it, there's, there's, there's a magnetism that I'm seeing. And I see it at, at work. I see it in my, my family. So a daily reminder or a couple days reminder, a couple times reminded throughout the day, I find it helps. Like you can elevate to other safety. We're working on safety in a shop environment or on a, on a um, large project. Safety is talked about every day. That's not an accident. It's what's needed to move the needle in the positive direction. What I found, and I want to encourage everybody, is the social distancing. We all need that, that reminder. We all need that neighbor nudge of, hey, kind of reminder, wear your mask when you go in. I can't tell you how easy that one is. Um, if we could unmute Kylie, Kylie had did some awesome things to help bring us in community. One of the things that we're all sensitive going through is, is a missing of people and missing being in community. We came up with some cool things this week that uh, I was hoping Kylie could share. We, uh, if you, Kylie, if you'd be so kind to share about what you do with the scavenger hunt on the team and how that went through, I can tell you when we started, our meeting, when we ended the meeting, the energy was up probably 30% for all. Are we able to unmute Kylie? Unmute. I think we're both trying to. Unmute. If we can't get that in just a minute, I'll, I'll just, I'll do my- Kylie, go ahead. I think we can hear you. Can you hear me now? Awesome. Yes. Okay. Um, I came up with a scavenger hunt um, and we did it on, it kind of, it ended up working on the day that we did it, kind of everybody, it was a rainy day, it was cloudy, it was a Thursday and everybody was just kind of, you know, another day at work. So um, we did a scavenger hunt, I came up with it and I said, okay, you have five minutes, go around your house and get all these um, things and they were by points. So. Um, it was, it kind of got them all up and moving and everybody's energy went from like down here to up here and they were ready to go and take on the day. So it just really brought everybody together and up and moving again. And then uh, Kylie, would you be so kind to explain uh, about the Friday happy hour? And then if you add the details in of bingo, because I know we all know what happy hour is, of course, but we did it we did this with video. Could you share with you how you, uh, and the bingo part and how that worked. Yes, yeah, so we scheduled a happy hour and I thought it would kind of be a good idea to have an event to do. So um, it brought people together and talking and, you know, created a few laughs. So I would, I created some things from um, some jokes that the team has on each other or things that I knew people would say um, to kind of make everybody laugh and be, um, be more involved and just kind of bring together and bring up the mood. So that really, I think, lifted some people together that day. And I'll tell you what, it was, it, was, it was just a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. And it wasn't quite as great as everyone getting together, you know, for a picnic or getting together after work. But I'll tell you what, it was a pretty doggone close. And we all were laughing and had, had a great time. And so Kylie, I want to say thank you for that. Another tip I've heard that we can all use, even with our family members, um, is doing remote dinners. And it's another way that we can just help bridge that uh, communication and desire to be together. And then my last tip that I just want to give everybody a heads up, it sure seems like this meat um, scarcity is really becoming an issue. For us that are located in Ohio, uh, we found a local butcher called Duma's Meats. You have to go out at eight o'clock and reserve a time slot and they'll bring out the food to you. But they're like, an, in, they grow the animals, they butcher the animals and they, they sell the, the, the meat products. It doesn't seem like they're being as effective as much as some of these other 
uh, chain restaurant, or sorry, chain grocery stores and stuff. So I would encourage all those out there that stock up on meat. It seems like it's really getting um, more, more and more scarce. So those are our tools for the week. Kevin, if you take us home. We're going to come home, brother. Thank you. I am, boy, this is fun. I have like 50 to 100 new friends. I can see some of your faces, some I can't. Phyllis, Phyllis, when I speak, I want you on the front row because you are so active. You're encouraging. You're nodding your head. I like you a lot. And Keith, I like Keith too. I like, I like that goatee because I can't grow one, Keith. I need something like that. Greg's got that going too. It's got the Greg, you grew, you must have so much testosterone. You grew that goatee. And so did Josh, just a little bit. Josh, we got a message from you. I, I can't wait to talk to you later. Didn't get quite to that today. Um, but just a privilege to be here. I have a new book called The Seven Affirmations. It'll be coming out later this summer. And there are seven affirmations. And you read one a day. And the very first one to start the week is I'm an unrepeatable miracle. And the second one I'm going to finish with today, it's I am capable. Think of that. I have a capacity. I have a unique set of God-given gifts and this unique capacity within me. And I'm going to read the affirmation. You'll be some of the first people to ever hear this or get this. Because I like Judy a lot. I really like Norm, but Norm knows just like I did. Norm, as good as you are, you outpunted your coverage. That's what John Maxwell said to me when he met Sherry. We went to dinner and he looked at Sherry and he said, Kevin, because he loves football, you outpunted your coverage. Norm, you both did really well. You want to marry the best, and we love Judy. I am capable of being the greatest in the world. I've been in Muhammad Ali's home. I've had him sign the book of greats we'll talk about later. He was one of the greats. But this says, I'm capable of being the greatest in the world at something. When I am unclear about that something, I simply seek out someone to love and lift with my gifts of greatness and the clouds of uncertainty swiftly disperse to reveal that something through someone. You know what your gifts are? Find somebody to serve. And you'll find in that service, that's your gift. The is saying, yes, yes, yes. And that shifts my focus from being the greatest in the world at something to being the greatest for the world, for someone. When I propose what it is that I will do with my inimitable gifts, they can't be imitated my inimitable talents, and then I act on that proposal, that is the very moment that I get on path and on purpose. And it feels like coming home. Remember those two words, coming home. Recognizing my natural gifts is like meeting an old trusted friend. It feels like coming home. And I am coming home to my authentic, genuine self. The feeling is blissful, natural, and unmistakable. It feels good to come home. It's been fun to be with you from my home today. Welcome to our home. Welcome to my office. Thank you for bringing me into your homes. Namaste. I salute the divine. Josh, I salute the divine within you. I salute your greatness. Let's hear Josh has got a thought. Josh, we got 10 seconds. Tell us what's on your mind, 10, 20, 30 seconds, and we'll wrap it. Um, it's, uh, I got quite a bit on my mind, actually. Um, you know, you, you saw my message, uh, Kevin. Uh, I want you to actually do reply that to me when you ever get a chance. But uh, just, uh, I wake up every day, and I'm glad I'm here. So, yeah. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to follow up with you, Gracie. Get me in touch with Josh. We're going to have a conversation later this week or next week, Josh, because we grew up okay. in a That's similar fine. situation. I'd love to talk to you. That would be my greatest gift to just visit with you. Thank you for taking the time to send a chat out. Um, Norm, 
Love you, love your team, anywhere, wherever you're at. Stop doing what you're good at. Start doing what you're great at. And if you're not sure what that is, say, God, what's in my nature? What do I love to do? What's second nature? What would I do for free? Then find someone to serve. And you'll get a lot closer to what your greatest at. Thanks for your time today. All my best. Norm, take care, brother. Thank you. Take care. Judy, give Norm a big hug. And I'm going to take those 10 deep breaths when I get done with my bike ride with Sherry and our grandkids at social distance. We are distancing. Um, even yesterday, when they came by to see us at the pool in the back, they kept wanting to come within 10 feet. And we're like, get back. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for your time.